the critter. I can't hide this much longer. It's called the slime mold. Uh, the old Smucker's Jam uh, uh, commercial with a name like Smucker's, you've got to be good. With a name like Slime Mold, your organism had better be a good organism to answer the questions that you're putting to it. What we learn in one species because of evolutionary relatedness teaches us things about other species, humans included. This summer, and indeed uh, for the past five years or so, uh, we've been looking at the process of targeted protein degradation. It sounds a little dark, depressing, but uh, it's quite interesting as it turns out, and, and uh, quite important because uh, this phenomenon of regulated protein destruction uh, influences ooh, the division of all cells, that is normal cellular division, process of mitosis, uh, but also aberrant cellular division, cancer, differentiation, neurological processes. There are all sorts of examples in which the destruction or lack of destruction of particular proteins under particular circumstances is critical. My project involves working with a specific type of slime mold, and this slime mold is basically an aggregation of a bunch of unicellular amoebae which come together and they come together through cellular signaling processes at a certain time when they're starving. They come together so that they can reproduce because when they reproduce they produce spores and disperse over an area. And what happens in this organism is that 20% form stalk cells and die so that the other 80% can reproduce. And what's really interesting about this organism is that the cells that are dying aren't necessarily relating, related to the cells that are reproducing. So in other animals you would expect that these cells that are dying are willing to sacrifice themselves for their kin. But in this species, it's much more altruistic in that sometimes you're s the cell is sacrificing itself for the sake of cells that have nothing to do with their own genetic material. So it's really exciting and an interesting question of to why does this altruistic behavior occur. Students do the experiments. I pose the questions, the starting questions for them, but it takes surprisingly few weeks in the lab, surprisingly few, before students are coming to me and saying, well, David, you know, nice idea, but it turns out it doesn't quite go the way you suggested to me that it was going to go. And so th that's wonderful. That just means students are taking more and more responsibility, really from the get-go, as to uh, how to conduct the experiments that they're doing. Summer is a wonderful, wonderful time uh, in which to perform scientific research. Their uh, research activities are not uh, interrupted by classwork, not by those, uh, you know, 15 hours in class uh, each week and another, who, who knows, 30 hours of, of, uh, of out-of-class work that's required to uh, do the semester's work. So the summer is a, a wonderful opportunity for uh, faculty supervision and especially for students being able to dedicate themselves to research. I really wanted to get a sense of what laboratory research was like. In introductory science classes, you get sort of exposed to labs, but you're not really fully fledged lab students. Um, so I wanted to see what that was like and see if I really did want to pursue science as a career. So um, I thought it was an interesting opportunity for me. When I was uh, looking at different biology programs, I noticed that some bigger schools had more resources, but they weren't allowing undergraduates to participate in much research except for one or two students in the entire class. But at a school like Amherst, if you want to and you get the opportunity to research, you just approach a professor and talk to them and you get the chance to dive right into it, whether it be during the summer doing thesis research or doing a fellowship that we have for uh, freshmen and sophomores or whether you try to do research during the year working in someone's lab and getting paid for it. It's a great time to be here over the summer because I don't have classes, my professor doesn't have classes, and we can spend a lot of time each day discussing my project, discussing which track to take, or pretty much just going through and analyzing the results step by step, and it really helps to have a mentor who's there for me who isn't really focusing on grading homework or preparing tests. Interactions with faculty are what you get at liberal arts colleges and often not at research universities. I had spent a uh, at least one summer doing uh, full research at a research university. The faculty member in whose lab I was working was in Germany for the entire summer. I did not see him at all that summer. I walked up and down the hall and found graduate students who could answer my questions. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, they're 
different and, and strong advantages to having the faculty members around and that you get at a liberal arts college.